Gestures are movements of the body, especially hands, arms and head, accompanying speech or generally replacing the words to express an idea or a meaning. It's a form of non-verbal communication in which visible bodily actions communicate particular messages. In all cultures throughout history, gestures are used and even children learn how to make a gesture to show their feelings about something. Do you use social media? Then maybe you are daily using a well-known gesture throughout the world that refers to something good, something you like. Can you think of what it is? Thumbs up! Gestures can make a person look like very dull and boring or, if overused, it can be overwhelming to communicate. There is something called an empty gesture where the feeling is not there, but the body movement is. So gestures are very important, but they should be used in caution, as the cultural difference can bring along a conflict or shame to the person using if used out of its cultural context. You will shortly hear from an expert how frustrating, but also a memorable experience that can be. Besides gestures, there are many things that influence nonverbal communication. Environment comes first. For example, in places where there are a lot of distractions, it is hard to communicate sometimes. Or in some office spaces, it is decorated in such a way that people are encouraged to communicate while in some others, they don't. For example, in libraries, you may find spaces which are designed to work in silence and social work spaces where you can work with friends on group projects. They are different from each other. The appearance is an important thing. Maybe you have seen online or on TV some social experiments where people with better clothing are treated differently by the society than those with less nice clothing, even when they are the same people. The clothing can tell a lot about the identity of the person. But remember my story from India. That clothing is not alone in transferring this message. I was later told by my friend in India that I had also the body language of the locals, while my other friend who was seen as a foreigner, had a different body language. Those studies have found out that in some cultures, men make bodily contact more easily, and in some others, women do that. However, when people touch another person from a different cultural context, they should be careful to not to be misunderstood. As in some cultures, personal space is much wider than others, and the touch can be seen as invasion of personal space and can be insulting. To show that a place belongs to someone, people can use gestures. For example, putting their hand into the seat, or to make sure no one sits in that place, they put their bags, coat, or other items, or to show something is theirs, people can hug the thing tightly something we see frequently in children who do not want to share. And another nonverbal communication is eye contact. In some cultures, eye contact during conversation can be seen as rude, while in others, eye contact is a necessity for open communication. Did you know that you have 20 muscles in your face that helps you make facial impressions? The variety of those muscles can create 4,000 distinct facial expressions. Face is an important notion in cross-cultural communication. It's a physical marker of most of our identities, not necessarily that we choose or accept, but that are assigned to us. For example, people can suppose our gender, race, ethnicity, and age to some level if they are familiar with our physical traits. Hence, faces are judged by cultural relativity, especially the expressions. 
We already told that eye contact can be seen as a not so polite act in some cultures, while it is seen as requirement in others. Same way, in some cultures, people do not look at your face. Sometimes even, they may close their eyes, and this doesn't necessarily mean that they are not listening to you. But instead, they may be concentrating on your words, closing visual distractions. The face notion is also related to the positive social image you want to create and keep during communication. By choosing your words carefully, by acting in an acceptable way, being polite and understanding towards the others as you interact with them, you want to protect your face. Especially in Asia, in China and Japan, where people are long-term oriented, having a sense of shame and persistence, hierarchy in relations are valued and the focus is on the future. Protecting the group's face is pretty important. While in short-term oriented, mostly Western countries, they also care about protection of faith, but the individual, respect for tradition and values as they care about the past and present. Another difference is that short-term oriented cultural contexts focus on this moment. And if they have lost faith, they can solve the issue later when what is needed to be done is done while those from long-term oriented cultural contexts will care about solving anything that has offended them now, as otherwise they would have lost face towards their community too. An American professor in Japan, not getting facial expressions of understanding from the group of professors he is lecturing, calls in an interpreter to make they sure they understand him. However, this is seen as an insult by the Japanese professors as they felt the American had caused them to lo lose face by implying that they were uneducated when he requested an interpreter. Not understanding what his actions would mean, American professor take, takes a direct action towards what he believes is the right thing to do to save time in delivering his message but offends the other party. These kinds of misunderstandings always happen, especially if one is ignorant of cultural differences. The facial and bodily expressions doesn't manifest in the same way in all cultures. For example, in Philippines, people learn to show their emotions positive or negative, while in Japan, they are taught to conceal their emotions. Still, there are theories about some facial micro-expressions, such as anger, disgust, fear, surprise, happiness, sadness, and contempt. They are believed to be being universal. So when evaluated, both Filipinos and Japanese show micro-expressions that it is an expression on the face there for a very small fraction of time and they are the same for the similar emotions. Cross-cultural studies around the world have found out that smiling, laughing and crying, as well as showing anger, are similar basic facial expressions. Also, greetings are similar in many cultural contexts. This means that if you pay attention, you can understand the feeling of the person you are trying to communicate with, even when that person is from a different cultural background. These are just a few examples of nonverbal communication. And keep in mind that all of these can be shaped by cultural and social rela realities of a place at a certain time. In the next video, you will hear about some intercultural experiences of an expert.